Hi, I'm Daniel Somlo. And I'm Marcelo. And welcome to the first episode of The Luxury of Time. We're coming to you now from the Rebecca Hossack Gallery, and we're going to be talking to you about finding your first chronograph wristwatch. So what have you got here for us today? Well, I've got three very different chronographs. I've got a sports chronograph with a lot of interesting history, a complicated chronograph with a split second, and one of the most definitive dress chronographs that I think you can get. But what is a chronograph? Well, a chronograph is a system on a watch which allows you to measure a period of elapsed time independent from the running time. The chronograph was initially invented for use in astrological equipment, however it further became a useful tool for racing horses and timing their speeding laps. And I think that's one of the really important things about the chronograph, its association with speed. It's why so many people love them and collect them as wristwatches, because it captures the essence of racing, cars and adrenaline. So what are some important considerations to make when finding your first chronograph? Well, I think the first thing you need to think about is what sort of style of chronograph you want to go for, what you want it to do. Is it something that you just want the, the look of, or do you actually want it to serve a functional purpose? Because the original purpose of all of these watches was to time things, and they had a function, uh, which is something I think that gets easily forgotten today uh, with, when they're so fashionable. Other things to consider is obviously price is always going to be something important but there's generally something out there for every kind of bracket and um, history I think it's important to pick something that really resonates with you and your feelings towards it what sorts of elements about the watch that you've decided really speak to you and what you want that watch to say about you when you're considering buying a chronograph what sort of things do you look for so typically I would look for whether I'm looking for a utilitarian sort of watch uh, or more of a dresser type of uh, chronograph. This is the first chronograph that we're going to talk about. This is the Omega Speedmaster and it's probably one of the watches that our shop is best known for. It's also one of my favourite chronographs which is why I decided to stop it. <laughs> it's very much your typical sports chronograph today. However, originally these were called tool watches because that's what they were used for, they were tools. Uh, chronographs were used to calculate things. Um, prime example with a Speedmaster was calculating speed and distance. Uh, and they were generally originally marketed towards racing drivers, which goes back to your original point about the horse racing. The Speedmaster, however, is obviously a lot better known today as the Moonwatch, uh, because it was the first and only watch to be worn on the moon. This particular reference, the 105003, is called the Ed White. It was named after the astronaut of Apollo 1, who tragically lost his life. And the important thing about this particular Speedmaster is this was the reference that Omega actually sent to NASA for testing. So this is the one that passed all the tests and was chosen as the official watch. So now we move on to the Breitling Duograph, which is my personal favourite. The reason for that is that it has a split seconds chronograph. So what a split seconds is, is essentially it has two hands where one is able to be stopped while the second hand concurrently continues running. What this means is we're able to time two different series of events um, within one chronograph and there is no need to stop and reset the chronograph in order to be able to continuously time the second one. This example is uh, indicative of utilitarian um, tool watch. It comes in stainless steel, 35 millimeters, which is a fantastic size on the wrist. Additionally to that, we have a nice legible dial with nice purple flamed hands. And the interesting part of the chronograph also is that we're able to start the second hand by pushing the crown. The crown is a hidden button, which essentially allows us to use that feature of the split seconds of the chronograph. So the ingenuity that goes into crafting one of these is on a very high caliber level. So now we've talked about the stainless steel sort of utilitarian chronographs. Um, 
Now we're able to move into a, a dressy sort of watch, uh, typically done in uh, precious metals. Um, and what better brand to start us off with than uh, Patek Philippe? So this is the Patek Philippe Reference 130 chronograph in rose gold with a pink dial. Patek Philippe are known as the Rolls Royce of watches and the Reference 130 was their first serially produced chronograph. It came about from the 1920s when there was a big need or demand from Patek to make chronograph wristwatches, but Patek were not a company to make steel tool oh. watches. So this was what they eventually produced in the 30s. And they actually made this watch for 30 years which is a hugely long time to produce a watch. That being said, only 1,500 pieces were actually made, um, and very few of them in rose gold, like this stunning example. Uh, most of the pink on pink watches that Patek made ended up going to the South American market as a sort of popular color combination down there. Um, but the combination of that and the chronograph hands being done in blued steel really give a nice sort of contrast and functional element to a very aesthetically pretty watch. We've now been through all three different watches. You've got three different pieces here with three very distinct characters and I hope you've given everyone an idea of what direction they want to go to because chances are it's probably going to land in one of these three different categories. Do you know which one you want to buy now? I'd still go for the Bright Link. Still going for the Bright Link. Thank you so much for joining us for the first episode of The Luxury of Time at the Rebecca Mossack Gallery. We hope you've enjoyed it. See you on the next episode.